make a boast of that name this morning. scripture to when service is empty so when we have 5,000 and we have 10,000 we don't quote where two or three the, the, the crux of the matter is not the two or three but that the Lord is intimating us with the fact that when his name is there then he is there hallelujah and we know that when he comes he doesn't come empty. He comes with his yoke breaking anointing. He comes as the fourth man in the fire. He comes as the repairer of the breach. He comes as savior. He comes as healer. He comes as deliverer. He doesn't just come to look at us. Hallelujah. But you see, before we, we start fetching from him, we must break our alabaster box. We must come into a consciousness that he is Lord. And so if you are not ill and you are not that old, can you rise on your feet and deliberately and consciously we want to release incense to the Lord we want to worship the Lord we want to come into a consciousness that Jesus is here and if Jesus was standing right in front of you now what will you do how will you worship him don't wait for them can you just break forth into worship just break forth if Jesus was just standing right in front of you what is that thing that you would tell him how would you pay your visas to him? Declare this year anything too hard for me. Oh, word. 
worship him, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Worship him, worship him, worship him, stand in awe of him. See yourself coming before the throne of Abba Father. I see the four and twenty elders, see them casting their crowns before him. Oh, can you pull your garment and just worship him who lives forever and ever? Just worship him. Jesus. It's all about Jesus. The emphasis is on Christ. We're returning back to the basics. We're taking root in our worship. We're taking root in our honor and our reverence for the Lord. We're shifting from the worship of man to the Lord. Hallelujah. Because that's how we're going to bear fruit upwards. By taking root, by taking root in, in focusing on the Lord. We're saying it's all about you, Jesus. For unto you shall the gathering of the people be. He said, if he's lifted up, if he is lifted up, not any man, not any woman, if he is lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. One more minute, we lift you up, Jesus. 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 We, you up, Jesus. we reverence your name. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. Yes, we do. It's all about you, Jesus. Oh, Kalebosi, na 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 Rali etelia motelia na keri brostelia estevi na tuni matai na tali ala tali na tali ate erezina na 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 ni ane teleki ala kolo moseyata ele di na i na kai ne si tali ala dosi ala mande oh we thank you Jesus hallelujah and I hear the Lord say that we have stepped into a season of harvest for the harvest is ripe. And I hear him say that even in this season, it's a season where the reaper will overtake the plowman. Yes, it's a season where I'm putting sickle in your hands. And so I see the angel of the Lord putting several sickles in your hands. The Lord said, I'm giving you tools. I'm equipping you. I see the word quantum leap written in the realm of the spirit. For this harvest will not come in trickle, say the Lord. It will come in abundance of measures. For I have seen your tears and I've seen your heart concerning souls. And so I'm putting the right instruments. I'm putting the right tools in your hands. I'm equipping you and I've sent reaper angels that you will partner with in this season to bring in the harvest for the harvest is nigh. And I hear the Lord say that this harvest will not just be about the church but even as you begin to yield yourself even in your individual lives and in the lives of your children you'll begin to see the harvest. You'll begin to see the harvest. This will be a tool for you to be uplifted in the midst of calamity in the midst of famine as you seek me as you serve me i will cause resources to be put in your hands yeah when men are saying there's a calfing down your narrative will be different because those that seek the lord will never lack any good thing that will be your word that will be your song in this season in the name of jesus amen hallelujah Glory to God. Thank you, choir. We receive the word of the Lord. We may be seated in the presence of, of the Lord. While we're doing that, can we honor our Father and the Lord and his beautiful wife? Oh, yes, of course, they will hear you. They are watching. Can you celebrate them better? Can we do it better? Can we clap with confidence knowing that the harvest is hitting Canada and the utmost part of the earth? 
Please, can you celebrate all the ministers of the Lord? The only name that is in my head is Pastor Danderson, but I know there are several others. Please, let's celebrate every one of them. Celebrate them and celebrate yourself for being a part of the service. I came with Pastor Nkechi. I'm sure by now you should know her and Kings. Let's, let's celebrate them. I honor and celebrate my husband in absentia. Hallelujah. Um, so Apostle had given me one or two information on where the church is uh, right now. And um, I'm going to be ministering from that place. I've titled my message, Living for Jesus. And I'm, it's my prayers that your lives will be altered by this sermon. I'm going to be speaking from my heart the way I have transacted my life after I have read, reading a particular scripture. And that's where I will start from. The essence of it is for us to know that we are not living for ourselves. So before I go to that scripture, I want us to look at Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. It says that I was crucified with him. But nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. I am crucified. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Meaning, I'm alive. But it's not me that is living. And the life that I live in the flesh is a borrowed life. Funny or PFE as they call me, was crucified. PFE died. But there's a PFE that is living, yet not her. The life that she's living is on Liz. It is not her life. Somebody gave her his life. I'm not talking about myself now. Put your name there. All of us. Not just that he gave us his life to live. He also gave us his faith. So the life I live. Put back that scripture please. I live by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. So he gave himself for me. Because he loved me. And then he gave me his faith. So, the same faith. The Bible said we haven't the same spirit of faith. Let me touch this a bit. We haven't the same spirit of faith. The same faith, if this handkerchief was the faith of Christ. That was put inside of Christ. That caused Lazarus to come out of the grave. The same faith that caused him to multiply the loaves and fishes. The same faith that made him to walk on water and do everything that he did. So if you see yourself as a computer, for example, and the software is the faith of the son, they pulled out the same faith of Christ and they installed that faith inside of you. And now the Lord is looking at you and he's asking and wondering, what are you doing with that faith? Young Gicho used his faith to build a massive structure. Not just a physical structure, but one of the men that broke into the realm of multitude. He was a pioneer there. Reinhard Bonke used the faith of the sun to win Africa. Kenneth E. Hagin used the faith of the sun to set a standard on faith. That the Adeboye used the faith of the son to spread the gospel. Aura. The same faith that was deposited inside of them is the same faith that we have, the faith of the son. Some of us are sleeping with us. Some of us are toying with us. So the first thing I want to say is that this life that you are living is not your life. You know, I've heard people say that it's my body, I can do every, anything. No, if you are born again, you are not. The Bible says you've been bought with a price. The body is his body. So you can't do anything with it. Hallelujah. The life is not yours. It is his. I 
And at the end of the day, the Bible said, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So we want to be very careful how we transact our lives. Give me John chapter 13. I know this is not a popular message. Probably you want the prophetic. You want me to prophesy you happy. Glory to God. But the Bible said we have a more sure word of prophecy. Hallelujah. There are times some of the things we are looking for, if we can just follow some principles in the Bible, you will get the same thing. So John chapter 13, he said, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had, was come and that he, he should depart out of this world, unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. The next verse, please. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing, this is my emphasis, Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and he went to God. Verse 4 says, He rised from supper and he laid aside his garment and he took a towel and girded himself. Go back to 3. Meaning that every activity that Christ was involved in was done with a mindset that he was come from God and he went to God. So if I want to look at this congregation uh, in my mind's eye, do we have anybody here that is a hundred years old? Here. Hundred. No. Ninety. No. So I will use hundred. Hundred years ago, all of us were not here. In hundred years time. So maybe you are looking at me and you are saying, God forbid, I will live long and I will not die. No wahala. Two hundred years ago. In two hundred years time. Carry two hundred now and add it to your age. Anything you calculate, that is what it is. Hallelujah. Some of us will be 240 something, some will be 250 something, some will be 290 something. My God. Meaning that 200 years ago, we were all not here. See, this world is a mirage. In another 200 years' time, we will all not be here. All this look beautiful, get this car, do that, hustle, you know, this rat race of life. There was a time that you were not here. Jesus knowing that he came from somewhere and he was returning back he transacted his life activity with a consciousness that this world is not my world this home is not my home I came from a source and I will return back if you know that you will not be here in a hundred years be careful how you live your life The day the Lord opened this scripture to me, it changed everything about my life. Some things that people hold very dear died. I'm not saying you should not prosper. I'm not saying you should. We, of course, you need prosperity to push the gospel. But you see, there's, there's this thing about the right race of life. Just, just enter. Just, you know, celebrate birthday one, birthday two, birthday five. And all of a sudden, secondary school, one day they say, ah, wayek. The next thing, maybe a scholarship. You went to Harvard, you went to Yale, wherever you went to, and all of that. Then you marry, then you give birth, then your children start. Then I sit down and I ask myself, this life safe. Can I speak pidgin English? Waiting in me. What's the whole essence? Especially when you have loved ones that have gone home to be with the Lord. You know, you sit down and you tell yourself, no matter how I walk from here to America, I'm not going to see this person. 
I will not enter a plane and stumble on this person. You mean I will not see my father again? Not out of a place of crying. Leave that thing. So where is he? What is he doing? How will he give account of his life? What is of worth? What is valuable? Jesus knowing that he came from God and he was returning to God. He washed the feet of his disciples. That Jesus Christ. You knowing that you came from God. You didn't bring yourself here. And you will return one day. Is it that the rapture comes? Is it that we possess immortality? Or you will die? See, don't look at me like that. I'm not the one that brought the spirit of death. And I'm not prophesying. That's why I dashed you 200 years. That's leave it to the full. There was a time that people lived up to 900 and something. Did they not go at the end of the day? They still left. So, the death should not be the issue. We stand on the word of God. We insist that long life is our portion. But you see, after the long life, you will eventually go. Even Hezekiah that turned his face to the world. Hey, he still went. Now, when you have wanted, because eternity cannot be compared to 200 years. Eternity cannot be compared to 500 years. Even if the Lord gives you a thousand years, the Bible said in his eyes, it's like a what? A day. It cannot be com compared. So why do you give more value to the one that is little at the expense of the one that is out there. We all don't know what is out there. Thank God for glimpses through the Bible. And then for people, if you watch like Sid Roth is Supernatural, you know some people have had out of body experiences. And all that. It is all a walk of faith. But listen and listen well. You want to be sure that by the time you are done here, whatever it is you are meeting there will be something that is better. Hallelujah. You know, one day I heard Reverend Chris or Yakilome saying that some people will say, God, I just want to be a gate man in your, in, in, your, in your kingdom. He said, if you don't like being a gate man here, there's no way you will like being a gate man in heaven. And then the next thing he said, the angel that is a gate man, who told you he wants to leave his post for you? Everybody is manning their gates. So the angel likes that post. He should leave it now for you that refuse to do something to get something there. Am I communicating something? So if we live with a consciousness, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 says that we all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And everyone may receive the things done where? In his body. The things that were done in this life according to that which he had done, whether it be good or bad. That means heaven has a reward system. When I was growing up as a child, I grew up in church, they used to tell us that when you win a soul, they will put a star in your crown. How many of you are as old as I am? And you were in church that long. So because we wanted many stars as children, we are always going for soul winning because we were told that there's this plain crown that they put on your head so when you win a soul it's a star and we wanted to have a lot of stars so the motivation might be wrong but one way or the other it helped hallelujah now can we go to um john chapter 15 remember the anchor uh, scripture for the month we're taking root what downwards so that we can take Good. John chapter 15. So with this consciousness, let's look at this. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purgeth it that it might bring forth more fruit. 
Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it ab abides in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you of my father. Herein is my father glorified that you do what? So the father takes pleasure when we bear fruit. The father is delighted when we bear fruit. So we can reverse that scripture to say that the father is also displeased when we are fruitless. He said, herein is my father glorified that we bear much fruit, much fruit, much fruit. And one of the major fruits that we have been called to bear is the fruit of soul winning. Hallelujah. The fruit of bringing people into the kingdom. Yes, Christ died so that we'll be healed. Christ died so that we'll be delivered. Christ died so that we'll prosper. But the primary reason why he died, the Bible tells us that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He died so that we will be delivered from the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of his dear son. And so the Lord is highly displeased when we are fruitless. Can I get Isaiah chapter 5? If you look at Isaiah chapter 5, it tells of, of, of you know, the, the anger of the Lord at Israel. Please put that scripture for me. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1. It says Israel. Now I will sing to my well beloved. A song of my beloved. Touching his vineyard. My well beloved had a vineyard. In a fruitful hill. My well beloved had a vineyard. In a fruitful hill. What did he do? He fenced it. He gathered out the stones thereof. He planted it with the choices of wine. He built a tower in the midst of it. He also made a wine press therein. He looked at it that it should bring forth grapes. What came out? Give us the next verse. Three. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah. This is God now lamenting. Come and judge between me and my vineyard because I'm about to pass a verdict look at this vineyard that I have lifted this vineyard that I've carried to a place like Rogic. hallelujah <laughs> glory to God if you know you are not angry say amen. amen some of you are serving the Lord in comfort you come to a church where when the is it the house of Judah? When the house of Judah, when you are ministering, you feel like you are hearing hill song. Like you are under life recording. Is that not so? Everything, the, the clothing, the movement, everything is in sync. Hallelujah. You are sitting and AC is cooling your brain. Anything you interpret it, that is what it is. Hallelujah. You drove a Porsche car and came to church. Sat well. Even when you want to lie down to worship the Lord, you do it with swag. When you get up, your clothes are still okay. You need to see where some other people are worshiping the same God. You need to see that some people don't have a roof over their churches. You need to see that some people don't even have fun to blow them. You need to see that some persons, when they come for Thanksgiving, the floor is not tiled and they roll on the floor. By the time they are coming out, you are wondering, is it church that you went to or whatever? Do you are that vineyard that is beautiful. The Lord hedged you. The Lord packaged you. The Lord put a fence. The Lord put this. The Lord gave you AC. Gave you a pastor that is on point. Gave you his word. There is no service you, you come to that you are not blessed. Just listening to the prayers of Pastor Nelly. I was blessed. Just, I just knelt down and I'm like, wow. 
If it is only these prayers, then something has happened. Listening to that worship, something has happened. Some people go to church and all they hear is, should I prophesy? You should prophesy. Should I prophesy? Morning till night. No word, no substance. But every day, the Lord is feeding you, putting manna, manure, dunking you, adding fertilizer, doing all things. And then the Lord comes to ask for fruit. And when he comes, he said, come and judge between me and this person. See, some of you, <laughs> I'm using some of you because I've been privileged by God to minister in all kinds of places. All kinds of places. And I've been in church for a while. So let me say one or two things. I'll just... You know, there are people that will, will, that you will come to minister and they will say, is there AC in the church? Is there, once you just ask one or two questions and it's no, they will turn it down. For this body of Christ, when we do, hallelujah. And don't look at me like this. Because some of you too, Reba Zayata, Yes, that's what it means. <laughs> Hallelujah. Spirit to spirit, what? Communication. Yes. After he has done all of that. But you see, the Lord will always say, I love the poor. I'm passionate. It's a true religion and undefiled. It's to visit the motherless, the fatherless the orphans that is still the gospel I was sick did you visit me I was in prison no not your brother was in prison that means Christ is in prison and he's waiting for somebody that will meet him in the prison Christ is in the hospital he's waiting for somebody that will meet him and at times we get so so comfortable so comfortable with what the Lord has blessed us with that we refuse to move. I was listening to Anne Hunter. She's the daughter of Charles and Francis Hunter. A powerful minister of the gospel. And she had been doing itinerant ministry for years. And then all of a sudden the Lord blessed her with a beautiful home. In her words, the home was very, very beautiful. And for six months after the blessing, she didn't go anywhere. She said one day the Holy Ghost came to her and told her that it's like this house is too fine. She said immediately he said it. She understood. The next day, she packed her bag. And she started going for missionary work. So the Lord is saying, okay, this, this blessing that I've given to you now is now your problem. So some other persons, it might be because of poverty. That's why they are not winning souls. But the people that I'm looking at here is not poverty that is the problem. You say, Pastor Fanny, you don't know. I know. Hallelujah. That's the first victory. The victory that so much was poured, but it brought in less. With all you have received last month, the convention, what was done. Now this month, we have five wonder Sundays, resources being poured. No, there must be something that you must do. You must awake. You must get up. You must check up. I remember a revelatory encounter I had several years back. One of those days, I got up in the middle of the night and went to my living room to pray. Immediately, I started praying. The Lord said to me, keep quiet. You talk too much. You know, you can just be so used to the rhetorics of prayer. I said, G -g 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 He said, I didn't, I didn't pull you here to talk to me. I want to talk to you. Keep quiet. And so I went on the floor and I became still. And all of a sudden, I, fought, I fell into a vision. And I saw a gate that was wide open. And I saw people running into the gate. I was giving a trumpet and they said, blow. When I blow, they were running. When I blow, they were running. As I was blowing, the gate was shutting. And then the angel of the Lord said, blow harder. I was blowing and they were running. I was blowing, they were running. Until eventually the door shut. Then he said to me, no matter how hard you blow, some will still not enter. And I came out of the encounter. That's why we blow that hard. That paradventure, at the end of this service, somebody will get up. 
and say, I will take my street for God. You might not know how to win souls, but can you start with a prayer walk? That every evening you are doing your exercise, as you are placing your feet, you are saying, I take this house, I take this gate, I take it for the Lord, I open it up, so that when somebody comes to do evangelism, the atmosphere has been configured for people to be saved. You might not be able to pray, but can you give? There is a man in scripture, Acts chapter 10 verse 31. He said, Cornelius, your prayers and your arm giving came as a memorial. It was so much that the Gentiles received salvation because of one man. One man. I don't know what was in his heart, but Cornelius gave. Cornelius gave. Cornelius gave. I wonder what he was asking the Lord. He kept giving and he was praying. One day the incense was too much. Heaven had to send a messenger. Touch Peter with a trance. The prayers of Cornelius instigated an encounter for Peter. All of a sudden, Peter goes to the, uh, the hour prayer, goes to the spot where he prays and he falls into a vision. Number one, Number two, number three, our Lord, I cannot. He knows he's the Lord though. He's saying I cannot. Then the Lord said, see, no matter what you are saying, three men are waiting for you. Go. Then reluctantly, Peter goes there. And even when he went there, he was speaking too much grammar. Wanting to hold the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said, while he yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell. Why? No, even the Holy Ghost could not be restrained because a man called Cornelius, he released prayers and released arms. It was too much. The weight of it in the realm of the spirit was too much that the Holy Ghost came to us, the Gentiles, because of one man called Cornelius. Fruit. Another person I love, the woman at the well of Sychar. Some of you call her a prostitute. I don't know about that because the Bible says she had been with five husbands. Not five men. We don't know if her case was the case of Tamar. If the first one died, the second one died, the third one died, the fourth one died, the fifth one died. And she said, eh -eh, if any man will come around me, let's just be day in our day. Because I don't know if it is this ceremony that makes them to die. Do you understand? But you see, in the midst of all of that, she was the only woman that asked a question that burst open a realm of worship. Deep within, she was a worshiper. It wasn't about the man, but that her heart was hungry for something. And maybe she resorted to sex because she felt that if I sleep with Musa, something will happen. And after all of it, she feels everything. Then she goes to Chidebere or she goes to the next person. At the end of the day, what her heart was crying for was worship. So here comes somebody. The Bible said he came to his own. His own did not recognize him. Could not pick him. But the woman that had been with five men. Could look at him and say, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And there's this burning question. I've been looking for somebody to answer. Please, before you go, where should we worship? Is it Jerusalem? Or is it this mountain? At the end of the day, when Christ was through with her, this woman, she entered the city. Make on her come, oh, come see somebody that told me my life. No, she was not ashamed to say, what will make a woman go to draw water in the afternoon? The bickerings of men, the gossips of society, so much have been said about her. She was tired of all of that. So go fetch your water in the morning or in the evening. Me, I will go in the afternoon. I'll go quietly because the women of Samaria, they want to kill me. So let me leave them alone. But when Christ was done, she didn't consider her story. She didn't consider anything. Her story became a point for her to bear fruit. The first female evangelist to win an entire city. How many men were we told want cities for the Lord? Just her story. You say you cannot preach. What about your story? What about your story? What about your story? 
Even at times when we come here to share testimonies, we so code the story that even the people listening, they don't even know what God has done. Have you heard those kind of testimonies? The person is saying, and the Lord did it, and the Lord now, the Lord now, and so at the end, you, you, if you don't want to share, don't share. I remember one of those days, years, years, years back, I was traveling to Lagos, I was still doing road. And this lady preached. After preaching and preaching and preaching, told us her testimony. I can't remember what they did. At the end of the day, she said, I cover my testimony with the blood of Jesus. Anybody inside this bus that said that they are going to do me anything because of this testimony? Did we beg you to share your testimony? Yes. Because we have a wrong notion that when we come to church and we tell people our stories that they will attack you. But do you know that that story can be the life of somebody? I think it was a lady in Sweden or whatever. She reached out to me. She said, Pastor Fanny, I heard you say that God healed your daughter of stammering. How did you do it? She probably did not remember all I said, but she remembered. Another one reached out to me and said, it was like you had one report that wanted to look like cancer. How were you able to? Can your story become a pointer for somebody to go to the cross? Christ died for our sins while we were yet sinner. He didn't die for beautiful people. We were all not like this. Even those of us that grew up in godly homes, if you check the story somewhere, there's small Kurukerewaka. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you are a saint. Can that story be something that can lift somebody? Can a young lady that have just gotten married come to you and say, my husband, eh? Hmm. very responsible very laid back he does not he, he, he does not do this he does not do that can you imagine Valentine Day he did not give me anything then you will now smile and sincerely tell him that for 20 years they've never given me a Valentine gift and I'm still in the marriage and we're still okay and, and don't feel less No, we, we want everybody to feel that you wake up every day with your husband and a rose flower and he does like this. My God. He carries a tray and say breakfast in bed. You don't want us to know that some days after you are finished speaking in tongues, heavy tongues, like a devil say, as you are coming out, you are saying they never pay the house rent. What they do you? of all of those dramas there are times that it is his fault it's not his fault there are times it is your yes there are times it is nobody's fault but one way or the other you have found a way to just make this marriage work can that story save a young girl's life can that story become a fruit in the life of somebody telling you that we go through stuff and the Lord wants our stories to bear fruit. So the fig tree, a lot was put there. The first one, but no fruit. Then the second one. <laughs> the Bible said it has many leaves. Hey, you are Goshela, dear. But no fruit. Jesus Christ will come to that fig tree. That is Mark 11, 12 to 14. 
He saw it from afar. Looks okay. Too much leaves. So the expectations are high. But when it comes there, there is no fruit. Are you that kind? When they see you, it's like you have power. In the spirit, you don't get level. No weight. Your son cannot come to you and say, Mom, I am faced with this problem. And that child knows that by the time I tell my mother, We better pray now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's, be it's better. I pray the prayer now. So that tomorrow, we are not having any issue. That child knows that if there's anything, you know, before he, he came out of the university, he told me one day his friends were talking and they were saying something. He now said, I don't know about you. People can do that but me. I'm a covenant child. <laughs> if he do like this, if I come, if I, I'm calling her now, she has started, so I don't know what is following you, but you see me, I have one woman in the house that says, she will say, come back here, you will move, I say, come, 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 that's what I have, such as I have, is what I give, can your prayer life be a fruit for that child? Are you the kind of one that they look at you? You have leaves, but no fruit. When that husband is in a death strait, you are the first person to abandon him. The Bible said the husband of the virtuous woman is known at the gates. He says, See thou a man. A man that has found a virtuous woman obtains favor. One lady came to me and she said, hey, hey, they are saying that my head don't get oil. I said, no get oil before. He said, but how am I responsible? Hey, because his mother said, it was when he married me that all of these things started happening. I bewitch. Now me too. I said, I don't know if you are or not. But if they look at the calendar, it was the point you entered that this thing happened. Amen. No do like this. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Glory to God. It is very possible that it has nothing to do with you. It is very possible that it's even your village people that wants to paint you in a bad light. You understand what I mean by that? That is doing that. But when you know that the Bible said, he that finds me finds a good thing and obtain favor. Your issue is not whether things are out of order. Your issue is that you man your gate in the spirit and say you can't marry me and be favorless. If you don't want favor in your life, look for another woman. As long as it is me that you marry favor must follow your life. And it is not by words. You wake up. You need them. He's sleeping. You know they are our heads. Oh. Hallelujah. You use anointing or touch the leg. It's like you are lo loving him. It's not love, it's prayer. Hallelujah. This is your leg. Could you waka better waka? Hey, Kali Gazuka Yaka. At times you carry the boxers, you carry the singlet, depending on how desperate you are. You are anointed. You carry the pillow when you sleep. Jacob encounter anything that comes to your mind is the word of God. You just figure this your singlet is mantle, the boxer is mantle, the this is mantle. I create an environment, an enabling environment. When you go out, men will favor you. All of a sudden, contracts will come, doors will be open. When it comes, you go remember me. You stand your ground and you change the situation. That's bearing fruit in the life of your family. All the members of your family. So are you that one that has leaves? In church, they know you as a prayer warrior. At home, you don't pray one day. You are the Bible study teacher. But once you step out of here, you close your Bible till you are Facebooking, TikToking, Instagramming. Which other one? Anyone that comes out, you are threading. You are the first person to jump in. And you know I'm not against social media. It's a tool for the gospel. But do you know it can waste your time? 
if you are not disciplined. It can steal your life if you are not disciplined. That's the second set. The third set, the gardener came. He said, three years, nothing. Fruitless, cut it down. A man had to say, sir, please, one year. And I asked myself, what if there was no intercessor to say one more year? I remember reading, seeing the invisible, doing the impossible by Ora Roberts. And he said, the Lord told him, build a school for medical doctors. Train them and send them as medical missionaries to Africa. He did the budget. When he saw it, he told the Lord, I, I've, I've named the book so you can go and come, verify. He told the Lord, this is mission word, impossible. Where will I get these hundreds, thousands of dollars, I can't remember the exact figure now, to do this project? The Lord was looking at him. The Lord told him, Africa, several years ago, Africa is, the, is ripe for the harvest. And one of the ways that the gospel will enter is you will send medical teams as missionary. I'm giving you that assignment. He did his calculation. There was, uh -uh, no way to get that kind of money. Then one day the Lord came to him and the Lord told him that since you have decided that you don't want to do this thing, you are no longer useful to me. I'm giving you so, so number of days. I will call you back home. Seeing the invisible, doing the impossible. Go and verify the story I'm telling you. Is there? The Lord told him, you are not useful. You'll come back. Immediately the Lord said it. He did a broadcast. And said, hey, help me. God said, I'm no longer useful. If I don't do this, then he will call me. Of course, media took it wrongly. They were saying, eh, or a robot said, God will kill him because he, they said all kinds of things. But he's the only man that knows what God told him. And do you know what this man did? After he did that broadcast, he will enter his bedroom. He will put his head bef between his feet. He will pray from morning till night. By the time he's coming out, the Lord will give him the exact figure of dollars that had entered his account. When he's opening the door, you imagine the, the anointing that is coming out. So says, a miracle has happened. He will say, wait, $3,000. Then the next day, he did it for 30 days stretch. The money entered. Bakam. Without calling anybody. Meaning that the, the fruit was inside of him. What he needed was contraction. Was pressure. The Lord knows that if I push him this way. He will stand in the place of prayer. You are not bearing fruit. You say there is no job. There is no, have you? <laughs> I don't know any other thing. If you have ever listened to me. You know I'm big on prayer. Have you prayed about that thing? Have you taken it to the Lord in prayer? No fruit. And the Lord said, in quote, you are useless. I will call you back. I have been called to win souls. The Bible said, he that wins a soul is wise. I can't remember, and this is not about me. It's about every one of us. When I started winning souls, I can't remember. It was in preaching in a taxi years ago doing my diploma at Lagos I finished ministering and a man was seated by my side a young girl and he said to me young lady you're an evangelist I, mean, I looked at him because I, mean, I don't know if I have calling I just know that every time the Lord will tell me preach and if I don't preach I'll be so disturbed so for my own peace not because I love the Lord though, but because I wanted my peace I will preach and the man gave me a book, You Shall Not Be Barren. I looked at it and kept it. Diploma was about entering university. What I, I'm not even talking, guy, you're saying I shall not be barren. But fast forward because my time is almost up. When I eventually got married and something wanted to play out, 
with a medical report that I was not aware of. The Lord saw that day. And I remembered that as a young girl, somebody gave me something. Then I went to search my archives and I saw that book. And I sat with that book until I got to a page. I screamed, I cannot be buried. That was how I got my children. Fast forward years later, in doing family planning and medical checkup and all of that, the same expression that doctor gave, this doctor screamed again. And I was like, what? He said, it's a miracle. He said, madam, you have children? I say, yes. He said, people with your medical condition, it is almost impossible for them to have children. The Lord did not change the condition. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but service. Service. Your winning souls will save that your daughter in the delivery room. Your winning souls will make that child be somewhere, excuse me, with friends. And somebody will want to drug his drink. And will probably put it. But as he's getting there, his hand will just hit it and it will fall. It will look like coincidence. No. Seeds of service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Apostle Tony Rappu just walked into the house. No, you won't celebrate my apostle like that. This is one of the most seasoned men of God in this nation. And he's one of the men of God that gave me a platform when I was not known. Please can we celebrate. I'm almost done. Three minutes. <laughs> so you want to greet them? Wow. Wow. Thank you, sir. We are honored. Hallelujah. That, that, that soul winning that you are doing, you'll be shocked. That your husband wants to enter a plane and all of a sudden he will just feel go back. It's not always money. There are precious things that are fruits of serving the Lord. That when the plague starts coming, he says, your, 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 your seeds, yes, have come. As in most times we think of the money as seed. But you know your time is a seed to the Lord. He said it is good that we bear our yoke while we are youth. He said the youth should serve the Lord while they still have what? Their strength. I'm telling you, there are many, many, many things that have been salvaged in my life. Just because... I yielded to serving the Lord. Have I always gotten it right? No. Were there times that I cried and I told the Lord that this work is a man's work. I don't know why you chose a woman to do this. And the Lord will say, your grace is sufficient. There have been times that I'll be going then when my daughter was young. She was the one that was a bit sensitive. And she would say, busy mom. And I'll be crying. But I know that the Lord has told me to go. So I do my itinerary around them until they now go to the stage and they say, Mommy, you are staying too much in the house. Please be going. Your government and daddy's government is too much. Somebody must go. I say, and it should be me. Yes, we understand, daddy. You just be. Do you understand? How about my husband that released his wife? I'm telling you that this soul winning we're saying will cost you. For some of you, it will cost you time. Some of you, it will cost you money. Some it will cost energy. For some, you might just need to. Can you imagine the disciples? One day, somebody said, the Lamb of God. They just walk up and followed him. Peter forgot that he has a wife and a mother-in-law. Do you understand? If it's today, they'll say, irresponsible man. How will you just go like that and do like this? But that was how they were following Jesus everywhere for three and a half years. And today we're speaking Peter, we're speaking John, we're speaking this. Do you know the sacrifice that went into the gospel? Church, 
You may not be sent to go like me, but can your money go? I'm not raising a seed, so you are not. And if the Lord is talking to you, then feel free to come drop it at the altar. Can you take up a mission and say, Apostle is doing this in this city. We don't know how they are doing it. Do you know the price of airfares right now? It's not smiling. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, when I sent you, lackest thou. Every mission is by faith. Every mission. For some airline, a round trip from Abuja to Lagos is 400k. That's what you pay to travel to some nations. Do you understand? So the gospel is expensive. You might not be the one holding the mic, but can your money go? And if you don't have money, can you be on your knees? Apostle Paul will say, pray for us. Oh, you don't know the arrows that come by just declaring God's word like this. Pray for our families. Pray for our children. Pray for that neighbor. Pray for that you. And for some of you, you don't have any reason. Start with your office. Pray for your boss. Drop a track somewhere. Drop a flyer somewhere. You might not be able to speak, but one way or the other, your character can be so impeccable that somebody looks at it and says, which church are you going to? I want to come to your God. That's another way of preaching the gospel. We have been called not to live for ourselves. Jesus knowing that he came from and he was returning rise to your faith. I'm praying the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be taking a seed of people, not money. You want to yield yourself to the Lord in this season. You want to say, God, I want to offer myself that for the next three months, at least I'll bring one soul to church. And you don't need to come out because we don't have time. Do we have, so that we pray that the power of God will rest upon you. Do we have people that want to commit at that level? You want to say, I want to win souls for the Lord. As a young girl, when we go for evangelism, children, babies, I didn't know much. In, in fact, my elder ones that were telling me and I was laughing, he said, Fanny, you were so desperate. You would just go and tell somebody, go to Jesus or you die. If you don't go to Jesus, you will go to hell fire, then you will run away. That was all I knew. But I, that was the gospel. You want to be that person that will say, I want to commit to, since I became a Christian 15 years, there is nobody that you can point to to say, my life brought this one to God. I want that to change. Can you lift up your hands? Because it's not by power, it's not by might. Father, I pray for every hand that is lifted up. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon them. Let the power of the resurrected King, let it come upon them. Oh, she gabarizo no the anegi anosia. He said you will receive power. Acts chapter one verse eight. When the Holy Ghost comes, so that you'll be my witnesses. Can we all lift up our hands? Because I sense that the Holy Ghost wants to come in a fresh way in this assembly. You can't witness by your strength. You can't witness by your power. Lift your hands and I will just scream one, two, three, receive the Holy Ghost. You receive and then you just begin to blast in tongue and I'm out. Fresh fire, fresh baptism. Fresh fire, fresh baptism. The henceforth we will no longer be selfish. We will no longer be living for ourselves. Some of you will need to change your offerings from today. You are comfortable buying hair for 360, whatever. But when you come to church, you drop 200 naira offering and you are okay. You drop a thousand naira, 5,000 and you are okay. This gospel is expensive. It is free, but it's expensive. It costs God hit the blood of his son. Oh, Jesus. Let your power rest. the first baptism they will stay in the upper room and the Holy Ghost will come again let the wind of the Lord come upon you 
For some of us, what we need is not fire, but in the words of Pastor Nelly, compassion. <laughs> Receive a new heart. Receive a change of heart. Receive divine empowerment. Now lift up your hands and say, not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ. From today henceforth, I will live in such a manner that the Lord will be glorified. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, I receive empowerment to will souls. Somebody shout glory to God. Mm -hmm.